Alright everybody, welcome back to Shadowrun Hong Kong, the extended edition. I'm your host, currently in the closet, but hoping to come out soon. Uh, it's, it's, it's where I said it's very quiet in here, so I like it. Anyway, let's get our game all loaded up and jump back in. As you can see, I made like 50 saves because it's how I roll. Rewind. Pfft. That sounds like a, a bad idea. Let's rewind everything back to a time before the shit went down. How's everybody? I'm sick. You can probably tell by my voice. I'm a little raspy, but it's like the sexy kind of raspy, you know? Like you want me to read you uh, bedtime stories all night. No, I'm getting better. I'm getting better. It's just a cold. I promise. We already read the stuff about Hale, eh? Right? Yes. We already talked to Kaima Chan. I was pretty sure I saved my game. Don't play with my emotions. What? Are you making me talk to her anyway? <laughs> uh oh, okay. No, it's just it's just being it's just being weird. Alright. I forgot that I had a robot dog. He's a Doberman. You can't tell. What was I doing? Character sheet. No, I mean not that. I need my missions. Uh, so I need to go get some sleep. Right, that's right. She was like, go and set them up a fucking place at your, your shitty little boathouse or whatever she called it. It was something along those lines. It was very not nice. The way she put it. Uh, that's not them, is it? Oh, is it over there? Is it that ladder? How do I get over there without going a long way? Can I cross here? A safe boat instead of a safe house. I love it. Uh, you two can bunk here for a while. She nods with her nose towards the hatch. You've each got, you've each got a head to take care of your ne your necessaries. Sorry, I can't read tonight because I'm <laughs> I don't feel good. Uh, try to knock before you enter someone else's. Okay. Uh, maybe. Seriously, Isabel's like, don't you fucking walk into my room. I'm changing. Or I'll turn you into fucking dust. I know the drill. Wu turns to you. Stinks of fish, just like that place we squatted at on Leary Avenue back when we were kids. The one with that Atson family and their dog. Uh, they were good people. Yeah, until the 162s decided they wanted the place. He wipes his nose with a gloved hand. They were good people. Sorry that had to happen to him. He stretches and his spine pops like a handful of firecrackers. I think I've been up for something like 36 hours straight. <laughs> Holy shit. He drops his arms. And this has been one shit state of a day. Time to end it. The orc turns to you, raises an eyebrow. Anything you need before I leave you to it? Um. How'd you get your hands on this place? How do people like us get our hands on anything? We found it. Ah, yes, the old find. You found it empty? He sweeps his eyes across the cabin. The doubt is playing with his face. Somebody abandoned a prime piece of real estate like this? She shrugs. Close enough. It was full of BTL junkies when we came across it. They were completely wigged out on some multiplayer cyber game. I'm not sure they ever chipped out of it. They were completely emaciated, stewing in piles with their own shit. Their eyes had sunk into their skulls. Pretty gruesome stuff. They racked up a killer score, though. True, they had the moves. Should have hung on IV while they were playing, though. Turns out nutrition is important. So what happened? Did they die? She shrugs. Nigel ran him out. Not sure what happened to him after that. Anyway, it's ours now. Auntie Chang says so. All about the engine room, you mean? Right, everything but that. Auntie rented it out from under us. That must have pissed you off. She shrugs. Whatever, we weren't using it. As long as our downstairs neighbor keeps to himself, he can have the lower level, especially if he keeps Auntie Chang happy. <clears throat> um, I think I'll have a look around. I don't really, I don't really care if you guys are. You know what? Fuck it. Just you and Isabel living here? Yeah. Gobbit's mouth screws up a bit. Now that Nightjar and Gutshot are gone, it's just us. The squeal of metal grinding on metal rips through the boat. 
It sounds like it's coming from a level below. And the creepy Russian guy running the engine room downstairs. Nothing to worry about. He mostly keeps to himself. She checks her PDA. He'll stop soon. He's usually quiet by now. Um, I'm gonna look around. Okay, but get some sleep soon. You look like you could use it. We'll go see Kindly in the morning. Figure out our next move. Sure. Whoa! Oh, shit. Fuck me. Did you see that shit? They just fucking teleported. That's some shit I would do. Uh, who's this? Is this the dunk? No, that's my bed. Where's Duncan? I want to talk to my bro. Oh, is, is that my stash or a stash? Touch it. Um, no, I'm gonna put my shit in there. Go away. Confirm that I didn't move anything. <laughs> All right, can I talk to Duncan? I feel like I need to talk to Duncan. I feel like we could. Yes. Okay. Let's say we need to have a conversation. Don't be rude to your your friend or bro or whatever you want to call him. <laughs> hey, Octa, I got some things I gotta take care of here. Let's talk later. Oh, I see. I don't want to talk to you anyway. I'll just, you know, fuck off on upstairs. Oh, am I allowed to go up here? Ooh, stairs. Touch it. There's Isabel. I don't really know if I want to talk to Isabel. I kind of just want to talk to Duncan, if I'm being... Oh, she's got a little rat. I was gonna knock, I didn't I didn't realize that okay. <laughs> Come back later, Silver Wolf. I'm busy. Silver Wolf, fuck me. Okay, fine. I'm not gonna talk to the other girl because I feel like she's just gonna give me the business. I don't wanna talk to you. It's like <laughs> Are you done yet? Are you done with business? Are you done with business, Duncan? <laughs> just go like <laughs> sorry, my nose is all running. Hold on. He's like, I don't want to talk to you right now. I'm like, fine, I don't want to talk to you either. <laughs> I'll just go fucking just get in bed and go to sleep. Good night. Uh, the cot in your cabin is neatly made with crisp looking sheets and an insulated plastic blanket. A fine layer of dust coats its surface. It's been a long time since anybody slept here. I'm gonna go see. See the time. You climb into the cot and worm your way under the sheets. They've been starched stiff as boards, but you slept beneath worse. The lice and bedbugs that plagued your old prison cell are merci mercifully absent here, and the salt air is fresher than the rancid stink of the Redmond Barrens. The moment your head hits the pillow, exhaustion sets in. You can barely keep your eyes open. Sleep washes over you like a warm bath, and everything goes black. Like black or a darker shade? Shade of black. That was okay. The dream is suffocating, the shifting tunnel of glass and steel, the towering silhouette of dark majesty, the shadowy doorway, and the teeth. They snap at your heels as you claw your way back to consciousness. You open your eyes to Duncan looming over you. He shakes your shoulder roughly. Octa! Come on, Octa, wake up. We gotta go talk to Kindly. The others have already left. That was one rough night. Sure. He lets go of your shoulder, cocks a thumb at the hatch. We gotta go. I've been trying to wake you for a while now. You were thrashing around in your sleep. Glad you did. I was having one hell of a nightmare. He reaches up and rubs the back of his neck. Yeah, I didn't sleep well either. I had a bad dream last night too. Are you okay? I'll survive. His fingers hit a knot. He winces. But man, nothing's gone right since we stepped foot in this in this country. Country? Yes, okay. I said county for a second. I was like, oh. I'll tell you something, though, and this is after a full night's sleep. I don't believe Ray's dead. Um. What makes you say that? Think about it. That statement from the cops on the newscast could be fake. Ours was. And that surveillance footage? We never saw Raymond get shot. The camera was hit by stray gunfire. His passion is intense but contained, focused. Raymond's alive, Octa. I know it. You make a good case, Officer Wu. He smiles. His teeth are white and straight and perfect. Should have been a detective instead of a headbuster, right? His smile fades. 
God, I feel like I'm 12 years old again, squatting on a stinking trawler. My partner's gone, Raymond's gone, hell, I'm gone. I don't even have a name anymore. And now I can't even go to sleep and hide from it all without having a nightmare. His jaw tightens and his teeth grind so loud you can hear it. What else is going to be taken away from me? <sighs> I'm here, Duncan, and I'm not going anywhere. Wu's mouth tightens. Too soon, Silver Wolf. He checks his watch. Goblet and Isabel left a while ago. We should get going, too. See what that triad lady has to say. Oh, and this is Auntie Jane. Dear Lord, why am I so close to my character? <laughs> there we go. I didn't put anything in the box because, um, I don't think I did anyway. Let's make sure. Because I kind of touched it. Okay, no, I didn't. Good. Good to know. Let's get on on, Duncan. I'm not leaving, bro. Alright, I was in prison. <laughs> Stop being mad at me already. It's like, I didn't expect to be in prison. <laughs> it's kind of sad. Like, he seems like he, he was, like, really close to Duncan. And Duncan's like, you just left. And he's like, I, okay, well, I was locked up for years, so... Maybe let me tell my side. What the hell? Oh, <laughs> I was like, what are they doing? What the hell's that? Kindly's place reeks of stale cigar smoke and fresh urine. The clicking of mahjong tiles is strangely absent. In its place is a low murmur of laughter and an air of eager anticipation. All eyes are focused on the groaning figure kneeling bloody and bound at the feet of Kindly Chang. She beckons to him with her finger and he struggles towards her, the loud rustling of the plastic tarp crackling under his knees as he moves. His pants are wet with fear. An acetylene torch lies on the table at Chang's right hand. Kindly Chang ignores the scene. She behaves as if all is right in the world. How did you sleep, my little ones? Um... Like a baby, Auntie. I'm still in the afterglow of our tour of the walled city. The triad's bo triad boss's eyes turn to half moons of amusement. Afterglow? Really? She nods her head towards the pillar of meat standing behind her. Then you should be delighted to say hello to your old friend, Strangler Bao. He's here because of you. How very pleasant to see you again, Mr. Bao. Bao inclines his head one quarter of an inch. Well then, now that the niceties are over, let's get to the nasties. She indicates the kneeling man with an incline of her nose. Shitbird here is a plainclothes cop. He snuck into the area last night while you were sleeping, hoping to find you and kill you before his competition got to you first. My men found him outside the trawler you were sleeping on. They saw to it that your rest was undisturbed and that your location remained a mystery. She nods her head back towards the pillar of meat standing behind her. You can thank Mr. Bao for that. Uh... Not a strangler, Bao. Bao inclines his head one quarter of an inch. She addresses the bloody man on his knees. Now, shitbird, tell my friends here what you told me. I, I don't know anything, I swear. We just got the order in last night. He pushes his head towards you and Wu from the fore, struggling to keep his balance. Somebody high up wants these two dead. The whole department is on it. I don't know anything else. Someone from high up? The old woman lifts her foot, taps his chin with the toe of her shoe. How high? The cop looks up at her, looks around at the room filled with triad soldiers. One of them opens his coat and shows the cop something inside. He closes it slowly and winks. The cop drops his head to his chest. All the way. All the way up. It's someone on the council. Someone on the executive council wants these two dead. Chang spits on him with a sneer. Fuck your ancestor to the 18th generation. Give me the truth. The cop wears the spittle. He never lifts his head. It's the truth, madam. I swear it. Whoever it was labeled them as terrorists were to terminate with extreme prejudice. Kindly Chang shuffles closer to the kneeling cop, reaches down and strokes his head with her hand. Then she slowly digs her fingers into his scalp. She pulls back hard until his chin points high. The triad boss leans in close and searches his eyes with her own. That's all he's got. She lets go of his head and smooths his buzz-cut hair with her hand. For whatever reason, last night, someone on the executive council of the Free Enterprise Zone ordered the Hong Kong police force to kill two nobodies from Seattle. I find that fascinating, don't you? Um... Yes, but why the need to label us international terrorists? She strokes a policeman's cheek with the back of her hand. 
Her rusty voice becomes sweet as she explains the ways of the world. Propriety, my darling. When the government has someone gunned down, they prefer to make it appear justified. But people feel safer when their murders feel like part of civilization. So, my throat's like, no more reading, yo. My, my. But you have definitely fallen into the deep end of the pool. Seattle isn't like Hong Kong. There, the megacorps control the government. Here, the corps are, are the government. The exec council is chosen by the corporate board of governors. They're basically the legislative and executive branches of the Hong Kong government in one tiny package. Eight people call all the shots, neat and efficient. Kindly Ching steps back from the cop and lights one of her thin black cigars. For the wage slaves and the civilian sheep, the corporations are a pantheon of gods who wield absolute power. She looks around the room, but not for us. The triad woman takes a long pull from her cigar and taps her ash on the kneeling cop's head. Who else knows about my guest visit to Hayoi, shitbird? No one, madam. I hadn't called it in yet. I wanted the kill for myself. No one knows her here, I swear it. She turns to her enforcer. Mr. Bao? Bao fiddles with the PDA in his meaty hands. He's telling the truth. No outgoing calls on his PDA. Very good. Thank you, Bao. She nods at the cop. Thank you for your honesty. In one smooth motion, Strangler Bao produces a silenced pistol, fires it once into the policeman's head, and replaces it in his jacket. His face never changes expression. What the hell? That was a cop! <laughs> um... Sure. Chang takes a drag on her cigar. I know, my darling. Now he's a silent cop. She balances her, her cigar on her shot glass, picks up some mahjong tiles, and begins playing with them absently. It is clear our friend Raymond Black was up to something involving the walled city. Something having to do with prosperity. And this executive council member wanted Raymond dead for it. She stacks her tiles one by one. Click, clack. Now they want you dead for it, too. Click. This plastic-faced man may show up on your door one day, too. She knocks the pile o over and it clatters through the table loudly. I have a proposal for you, my sweets. A smile lights up her dead black eyes. Work for me. With Nightjar and Gutshot dead, I find myself with two job openings. Fill them. I have need of deniable assets here. Players and affiliated with the triads who can take care of some of the more unsavory business needs about town. You've proven yourselves resourceful, and you have no existing connections here. That can be a positive in the, this line of work. Uh, shadow runners. Wu grunts. His jaw tightens, but he stays quiet. In exchange, I will keep you safe from pests like this one. She nods at the body on the floor. The pool of blood on the plastic wrap continues to widen. You'll have safe harbor here in my town and a steady source of income. She picks up a handful of tiles again. And while you dip your toe into the waters of corporate espionage, organized crime, and clandestine mercenary actions, I will employ my network to find the plastic face man and gather information about Raymond Black. Where he's been, who he's talked to, who stood to gain from his death, what this prosperity could be. Uh, what's in it for you? Besides the money and the benefits of helping others in my community, I need to learn who killed one of my clients and then ordered the cops to execute my team of Shadowrunners. Her voice drops and she becomes deadly serious. This is a brazen disregard of my power. Face dictates it must be confronted, or I stand to lose everything. Uh... How would the arrangement work? I find the right jobs for the people with your talents. You do what your clients cannot do for themselves. I take a finder's fee and a small percentage of your earnings. You make a lot of nuyen very quickly. It's all very civilized. She leans in. Work with me. Allow me to help you make money. Let my network work for you and help you find out what you've gotten yourselves into. Without my help, you won't last a day out there. You're completely out of your depth, I'm afraid. You need a partner. Kindly Chang will be your partner. Wu hands, uh, Wu's hands go to his hips. He drops his head and shakes it a little confused. I gotta wrap my brain around this octa. Things are moving fast. There's a lot to process. <sighs> Think about it, Duncan. This gives us freedom to find out what happened to Ray. I know. I get it. I just gotta reconcile this whole... He grips the back of his neck, squeezes hard, rips his hand away. Ah, fuck it. I'm not a cop anymore. That guy's dead. He nods, the decision made. 
I'm in. What about you? I think Ray's still alive too. Let's run the shadows and figure out what happened to him. Raymond is alive, I'm sure of it. So I'll run the shadows as long as Angie Chang keeps up her end of the bargain and helps us figure out what really happened to him. Then I'm gonna find my father. And then it's done. Heioi is now open to you. She gestures to her lieutenant, who raises a finger to her ear and whispers into her sleeve. First order of business, Octolatos and Duncan Wu don't exist anymore. You'll need street names. Yeah, okay, I'll think of something. Gobbit rubs her cheek against her wrath, a glint in her eye. I think we've already got you covered, Gunshow. She turns to Isabel. Fits, doesn't it? Indeed. I knew that was gonna stick. <laughs> it has stuck. Gobbit, Isabel, we'll handle this same this the same way we did with all your previous work. She didn't say Nightjar. All the jobs I line up for you will be sent to your computer on the squawk boat. She's pointing at you. I got it. Why him? <laughs> It's a simple process of elimination. She points to the little decker. Isabel isn't the leader type. You got that right. She moves her finger to the orc girl. As for Gobbit, let's just say Gobbit doesn't have a head for business. Not my thing. Then she rests her finger on Wu. And then there's Guncho. She wiggles it. The jury's out on Mr. Guncho. Meaning? Her response is direct, straightforward. Meaning there's a lot going on there's a lot going on within that head of yours right now, and I'm sure I can trust you. So I'm in charge because I'm the best of the worst. Uh, gun show will be fine. Trust me. Come around you. Kindly Chang makes eye contact with you and holds it. She keeps it steady for a long time. Who doesn't notice? Don't worry, I'll be cool, Octa. I had a handle back in the Barrens. Silver wool. Guess it's time I dusted it off. Yeah. Wu shakes his head, eyebrows raised. Gonna be weird calling you Silver Wolf again. I haven't called you that since we were kids. Gobbit looks from Isabel to Wu to you. I guess this is our new crew. The rat on her shoulder scurries to the top of her head for a better view. Welcome to the shadows, Silver Wolf. Yay, I'm in the shadows now. Like a demon. Okay, so, so she's done with me? What, what was, oh, okay. Bye, bye, Auntie Wu. Bye, bye. I have it. Um, as you lead your team to the shadows, your companions will continue to develop and learn new combat skills. Clicking the icon in the lower right-hand corner of the screen will open the crew advancement menu. When this icon is highlighted, one or more of your companions is eligible to learn new combat skills. Cool. Like this thing? Ooh. Um, can I like spirits will never break away? So, like, do I do that one? Can I do both? Range combat. So does, does that mean that picked that one? I guess. I mean, how about my boy? Uh, Duncan gains a rifle ability that does 2 AP damage, making it easier to hit on his enemy attacks. Oof, both of these sound good. Let's do this because it pierces the armor. Yes. So does that mean they have that now? Whatever that means. They're they're now proficient.
questions and, and, and stuff. Okay, sure. Yep, bye. Uh, what about me? Huh. Ooh, I have ten karma. Where should I spend them? Let me spend my karma. <laughs> oh, body. Jeez. Okay, so... My s what are these? Body... Quickness, which I find important. We're gonna upgrade my dodge, cause Jesus. <laughs> Strength. I don't really use my throwing weapons. Like most of the stuff I have is like ranged. I don't really can't equip a classy drone. That would be cool. Um. Wisdom. This controls my spell casting. My charisma. I love charisma stuff. I think it's fun. Spirit totem. Ooh, I need a spirit totem. I can really upgrade my. Peaceful messenger uh, mediator. Set all superior perks to be changed to stage two. Bull. Gains all allies within three tiles with damage reduction. Grants all allies within three tiles with damage plus four. Three tiles of damage from the nearest recent attack. Cat. Eagle, raccoon, and wall, boar, fish, and ivory fish. Leopard. <sighs> Bear sounds good. Eagle sounds good. This heals us. I'm gonna do bear. Bear sounds like a good idea. Hmm. Let's go. Okay. I save because I'm a genius. I almost hit the restart level. Back to the boat. I feel bad for Duncan. Like, I really do. One second. I can just go downstairs. Well, I should talk to Duncan. <laughs> Are you done doing business, bro? It's oppressively hot down here, and the air is full of synthetic odors that grab you by the sinuses and refuse to let go. 
You can smell engine grease and melting plastic, ionized air and lead solder. A quick scan of the room tells you why. The downstairs tenant has converted the space into a machine shop. Metal fabrication tools and duraplast extruders line the walls, and a pair of heavy industrial manipulators hang from the ceiling. Oh, random guy, hello. A man in a black trench coat stands with his back to you, staring at a monitor mounted above a sturdy workbench. He addresses you without turning. Ah, oh, I was wondering when I'd meet the new neighbor. His voice is pleasant and cultured. There's a hint of a Russian accent there, but it's buried under layers of nuance. Please stay where you are. I'll be with you in just a moment, and unless you fancy an unplanned trip to Chrome Alley, don't touch anything. There are all manners of tools in here that could take your head clean off. Take your time, I won't touch anything. Ah, you're very kind, thank you. Try to see what's on the screen. The feed on the monitor looks like some sort of design software. You can see what happens to be a slim, spidery appendage in orthographic and perspective views. Very good. Yes, that's coming along nicely. Very nicely indeed. He turns toward you. Ooh, he's pretty. He's a good looking guy. I've gotta say. You might be like, what? But I think he's good looking, so. He turns toward you smiling, and for the first time you can see his face. He has broadly handsome Slavic features and a chiseled jaw. See, even my character thinks he's fucking good looking. His eyes are like flecks of ice. So sorry to have kept you waiting, Mr. Um. Silver Wolf. It's no problem. Don't worry about it. You're too kind. Now tell me. What can I do for... His voice trails off as a flash of motion catches his eye. With alarming speed, a sinister-looking drone scuttles out from under the work table. Its movements are surprisingly agile and fluid. The machine rears back menacingly, spreading its forelegs in a clear sign of aggression. The man's smile tilts, and his tone goes apologetic. Please don't mind the drone. He can be... territorial. But so long as you remain civil, he will not bite. He extends a hand. Simultaneously, the drone relaxes into a neutral position lowering its killing legs. Raptor. My mechanical counterpart here is called Koshe. Uh, shake his hand. A pleasure. His hand is rough and abnormally warm to the touch. He shakes your hand with a solid grip. I am very pleased to meet you, my friend. In a community such as Heioi, it's important to be on good terms with one's neighbors. Uh, agreed. Speaking of which, I'd like to ask you some questions if you have the time. He glances at the bracer on his forearm. A technical display winks to life, then gutters out. Very well. This morning's casting should still be cooling for a few minutes yet. That's time enough to talk. Uh, Koshe is an interesting name for a drone. Yes, I suppose that it is. Not many riggers would name their most prized possession after a villain from a fairy tale. A nod to my heritage, I suppose. What was a fairy tale about? A thoroughly unpleasant person. Koshe the Deathless, he was called, and for good reason. His soul was cleverly hidden outside of his body, and he could not be killed so long as it remained intact. Koshe was a villain, a notorious kidnapper of women, but something about him always stuck with me. I suppose that it was the notion of immortality, though cleverness though through cleverness that resonated. There was something to be learned from that, I was sure, and so when it came time to name my beloved creation, his was the first name that came to mind. And is your drone deathless, like its namesake? <laughs> In a manner of speaking, I suppose that he is. I have redundant copies of every piece of his architecture, and his core programming is stored on a disk in a secret location. Should he ever suffer critical damage, I can easily bring him back. I had a plan once to automate the self-repair process. I must confess, it was really quite ingenious. But alas, my research was lost. One day I will reclaim it, and Koshe will become as deathless as the stories claim but it will not be today. Um, when you said this morning's casting, what did you mean? Exactly what I said. A casting that I made of a new locomotive assembly for Koshe. He gestures at the display above the work table. A biomimetic design, as you can see. This one is inspired by the walking legs of a decapod crustacean, the mangrove crab, to be specific. That's fascinating. And will this new leg assembly make your drone more effective? That remains to be seen. But there is more to life than combat effectiveness, is there not? 
By fabricating new components for crochet, I unlock options. Different ways of being, even the failures, and there have been many, have value in this context. How did you learn to do all this? More training and experience than I care to mention. He offers you a wry smile. Drone architecture was once my profession, you see. Now it's more of a calling, one that I'm free to pursue now that I have freed myself from the shackles of corporate servitude. Um... You've got some interesting machinery here, not the kind that you typically see outside of corporate settings. He smiles. The same could be said of many in Hayo, I am sure. This is a smuggler's den, is it not? Our entire economy is based on people having things that they shouldn't. Is there a particular device that interests you out of curiosity? The robotic arms that you've got over there. They look like something taken from an automotive assembly plant. I'm more interested in that drone you have there. Koshe? Ah, but my friend, you're wrong. You will never find his like in any corporate factory or lab. He is mine, my own creation from the top of his sensor clusters to the tips of his claws. I designed him, fabricated his components, and built him by hand. Impressive. He shrugs, no more so than anyone else who follows his passions and perfects his craft. Uh... Are you Russian? I thought I got a hint of an accent there. <laughs> are we? We're totally flirting. <laughs> he nods. You have a good ear. I'm impressed. Yes, I grew up in Nizhny Novgorod. Went to school there, started my career there in the industrial sector. A fairly common story, I'm sure. But I have also traveled a great deal, and, I'm s and in so doing, I have absorbed a number of other languages and dialects. How many languages do you speak? <laughs> I'm all curious about this guy. Counting Russian and Cantonese? Fifteen. He shrugs apologetically. It shames me to admit that I'm only literate in twelve, however. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's still impressive. Perhaps in compared to the common man, but I've known a great many polyglots who can can and do put me to shame. He gives you another half shrug and Koshe mirrors a gesture. Arabic has been a particular bugbear of mine. The unfamiliar characters and lack of vowels make it damn tricky to get a handle on. But I suppose that all men have their limits. You said that you used to work for Core. Whose payroll were you on? I said Megacorp earlier. Someone slapped me. He sighs. That is something of a sore subject. My departure was involuntary, you see. I did not part ways with my employer under the best of terms. I will tell you that I worked for Grishin Aviacor, but you'll forgive me if I don't want to go into detail. Uh, keeping all this machinery running can't be cheap. How can you afford it? Freelance. At the risk of sounding immodest, I have commodified myself rather well. There are always corporations in need of design consultations. You'd be surprised by how lucrative such work can be, and there is always other work that can turn you t I can turn to in a pinch, like murder. Uh, you said that you did other work besides consulting. Care to tell me what kind? Is it stabby? He pauses, and for a second, something flashes in his eye. Koshe lowers his bo its body into a crouch. A rather personal question, wouldn't you say? Maybe, but then we're having a personal conversation. Indeed we are, but even in personal conversations, certain topics can be held off limits. Truth be told, I don't feel especially comfortable discussing my side work with relative strangers. Suffice it to say that my freelance activities often fall on the illicit end of the spectrum. Mm. It's okay, I'll drop the subject. Maybe we can come back to it later. Perhaps. He glances at the display on his bracer again. Now, will there be anything else? I have to get back upstairs. So, I'll see you later. <laughs> Very well, come back anytime. It's pleasant to have someone to talk to. Mr. Ooh, is this, your, is this your bedroom? What is this? Can I go in here? Am I allowed? What is this? Did she? Okay, he wouldn't send his drone to murder me immediately, so I'm guessing his room's not off limits. <laughs> I was just like, is he gonna send that thing to stab me? Talk to Duncan. Where's my bro? Where is he? Oh, there he is. Hey, Duncan. Hey, I just met the greatest person downstairs, Duncan. You'd like him. 
Wu's cabin appears to be the only clean spot on the bolt hole. His equipment is neatly laid out in his bedding, grouped by type, arranged just so. He's currently in the process of cleaning his weapon with meticulous care. Of course he is. Well, that's that, I guess. We're runners now. Uh, something on your mind, Guncho? Yep, think it's time to catch up? <laughs> uh, let's do that one. <laughs> Wu holds up a palm. Don't. Just don't. When we're alone, it's either Wu or Duncan. Guncho doesn't live here. Wu looks down the barrel of his gun, brushes off some dirt. And yeah, there's plenty on my mind. That's why I'm doing equipment maintenance. The discipline of it helps me focus, process. What about you? You look like you want to talk about something. Uh, I can't get that dream out of my head. You said you had one too, right? Yeah, yours sounded like a nasty one. I don't remember much about mine. I was pretty creeped out by our run into the walled city. Between that and all the drama, I'd be surprised if I didn't have a nightmare. He shrugs. Um, was the walled city in your dream? Of course the walled city was in my dream. It was a nightmare, wasn't it? He gives you a lopsided grin. Was it in your dream too? Uh, sure looked like it. Sure looked like it. I'm not sure I'm surprised. The walled city is more than just another slum and a sprawl. Hell, it is a sprawl. Of course we dreamed about it. The feeling I had there has stayed with me. It felt thick, heavy, and I got this overwhelming feeling of, I don't know, wretchedness, I guess. What do you remember about yours? Just little snatches of things. He puts his hands on his hips and concentrates. The walled city was breathing, and it had teeth everywhere. And it was a tunnel that was so bright that I had to shut my eyes. And Raymond was there. He was either kneeling or lying down. I can't remember which, but he was crying. That's what made me wake up. The sound of my father crying. Did it feel any different from other nightmares you've had? He takes his time thinking about his answer a bit before he responds. You know how sometimes you'll be mad about mad at a friend in a dream and then wake up still mad at him? And you treat him like he did something wrong when you see him? It kind of feels like that to me. Like I dreamed I was swimming towards a bright light, and when I woke up I was out of breath from the effort. Um, I want to talk about... Raymond. Okay, shoot. Um, did he say anything about me after I left? You know Raymond, Afta. He taught us what he wanted to teach us, told us what he wanted to know. I wanted us to know. Everything else was met with a wall of good-natured silence. He used to say, You are the master of the unspoken word, Mr. Wu. Once it is out of your mouth, it is out of your control. So no, after you left, he never said a word about you. Not a word. What do you think's going on with him? I don't know, Okta. He was clearly obsessed with the walled city and whatever prosperity is. He sounds like a sleepwalker trying to stumble his way through a dream or something. A sleepwalker who hires shadow runners. Whatever he was doing, he knew it would be dangerous. Raymond was smart. Smart as hell. If he thought he needed runners to take him into that place, he needed them. Why do you think he came to Hong Kong? Well, he's free from here, right? Sounds like he had unfinished business that he needed to take care of before... Do you think he's dying? I don't know. Yeah, me either. Just something to think about. Okay, let's talk about shadow run being shadow runners. What's there to say? I worked my ass off to pull myself out of the gutter and make something of my life. I did what it took to earn my bronze, and now I'm a mercenary hiding in the shadows of a foreign country, doing dirty, jo dirty jobs that the core needs to keep off the books. It's the reverse of everything I ever wanted. You seem to be taking to it pretty damn well, so let me ask you something. You said you thought that Raymond was alive too, that we'd run the shadows until we could figure out what happened to him. Was that true? Yes. For me, this is all about finding out what really happened to Raymond. Who nods, clearly satisfied. Good. Or good that we're on the same page. I feel better knowing that. What's your opinion of Kindly Chang? I'd say she's got us right where she wants us, right under her thumb. What do you want to talk about specifically? Uh, what do you think she wants from us? As long as her network keeps delivering information about Raymond, I don't care. At least for now. We need to stay with her. We have no other connections in Hong Kong. Without her, we're dead in the water. Uh, you think we can trust her? A triad boss and an underground fixer? No. I don't think we can dress her. But as long as we all share the same goals, we should be okay. Makes sense. As long as we serve her interests, she doesn't have a reason to screw us over. Exactly. 
Exactly. It's simple. She provides jobs, we do jobs. She gets information about Raymond and that plastic faced man, and we figure out what the hell is going on. We figure out what's going on, she doesn't end up in the trunk of a car at the bottom of the river. Everybody wins. What about the plastic faced man? Creepy dudes are nothing new to me, even well-dressed, creepy corporate dudes. Between the gangers we grew up with and the shit that I've run into as a cop, I've seen all kinds. I just want to know who he is and who he works for. We should keep an eye on Strangler Bow. We should keep an eye on everybody, and that guy is definitely no exception. I've seen plenty of cold killers in the Barrens, and plenty more since I joined Lone Star. This guy's the real deal. I'm not sure if he knows what the word remorse even means. You should steer clear of him. I'll be careful. Uh-huh, I can see that. Um, let's talk about Gob and Isabel. They seem confident, considering how young they are. But then again, they sound like they've been taking care of themselves since they were pretty young. The three of us work together well on the walled city. Based on that, I'd bet the four of us would make a solid crew. Uh, do you trust them? As far as I trust any runner, yeah. It's like Raymond used to say, trust and verify. They haven't given me a reason not to trust them, so until they do, I'll believe what they say and keep my eyes open. Let's talk later. Later's good. I want to do some cardio, work off some steam. Then it's rack time for me. You should do the same, Octa. A couple hundred push-ups will do you good. Please, I could bust out 200 in my sleep. He raises an eyebrow. I love to see that sometime. But for now, you should clear out. I want to get started, and this cabin isn't big enough for two. Good boy. Two and a half. All right, everybody. I'm going to go to my bunk. I'm gonna save my game, and that is gonna be it for tonight. Apparently, I can't go to sleep because fuck me. <laughs> Alright, I think I gotta go check on my computer, that's why. But yeah, I love you guys, and I will see you next time for more of this epicness. Alright, love you. Bye!